All right, so now in this video we're going to focus on the trim putt. I have a couple of them here. This is a 10 kilo ohm trim putt. And this one you see it says B. That means it's linear, which means as you turn the dial, the resistance just changes steadily. And uh, so it says uh, 1, 0, and then 2. So that 2 stands for the number of zeros following 1, 0. So 1, 0, 0, 0. This is a 1,000 ohm trim pot. This is a 10 kilo ohm trim pot. And uh, trim pot stands for trimmer potentiometer. So there's bigger potentiometers in this. You just call them potentiometers. These smaller ones we call trim pots. And they're nice for beginning electronics because they fit on the breadboard. Really nice, as you can see there. So it's got three terminals there, three pins. So I'm going to make sure that uh, we can get directly to the power rail straight across from here and I want to uh, generally I put the uh, single pin right by the edge there so this is kind of struggling to go in but you keep working at it you don't want to warp the leads though so I'll try to get it in and uh, at some point you'll get them in so this is why I just leave them in once I get them in but I did have to pop this out for another circuit so there we go we have that trim pot in the board so now we're gonna take some multimeter measurements I already have it set to 20 kilo ohms because we're gonna measure the 10 kilo ohm trim pot first so I gotta set it to a, a higher setting than uh, what we expect and I have the red probe in the ohm setting since this meter measures uh, milliamps and also capacitance different from uh, these two plugs usually there's an amp one that's separate but since there's uh, options I gotta make sure that I have it in the right slot and I've already taken a measurement where I had it in the wrong slot then I gotta hit the power button so this turns on and off by power a lot of meters you gotta turn the dial to an offsetting so in any case we're gonna measure the resistance it doesn't matter with polarity across here this is a fixed resistance so it's rated for 10 kilo ohms but you can see we got 9.22 kilo ohms and these trim pots I notice they tend to be about 10 percent different from their rated value for the fixed resistor part so now we have a dial here and uh, let's set it about halfway and when we do that you'll notice this is the output of the trim pot right now you either use one or both of these inputs but here you can see now we got about half the resistance between those two points and about half the resistance between those two points I'm going to set it most of the way up here to keep it going from going all the way to zero and you can see we got uh, 0.27 kilo ohms we turned it up that way so the resistance went down the distance across the resistive element between these two points is less whereas it's greater over here so we have almost the full resistance now 9.18 kilo ohms and the uh, trim pot up here you need a screwdriver to set it but it works exactly the same the only difference is you're dealing with less resistance it's a one kilo ohm and again you can see it's about 10 percent higher than its rated value and I've been noticing that with these trim pots they generally seem about 10 percent higher or lower and again let's measure the resistance between the two points so it's more towards up there than down there so we got a bit more than half of the resistance there if we go up here we have a bit less than half of the 1100 kilo ohms of the uh, entire component okay so now the way that we just looked at this component you can use it as an adjustable resistor you just pick which uh, input you want and the output here and you adjust the resistance accordingly so pretty straightforward now we're gonna look at using this as a voltage divider so as you can see I have a jumper to one of the pins of each of these to the positive rail and the other one to the negative rail and we will 
take uh, voltage readings to look at that. So I'm setting this to 20 volts. Again, make sure I'm in the right slot. Voltage, just a precaution. I think I fried a uh, power supply before because I had it in the wrong setting before. A power supply went bad, and I noticed when I was trying to take readings, it was in the wrong slot there. So I think I fried one. I have backup, so I bought five of these, I think, for about $10. And so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take alligator clips to uh, keep my hands free. So we're going to put the uh, black probe to the ground rail here. And we could put it there. We could put it right there between there and there or there and there that's one node it's one conductive area take the black probe and uh, clip it to there the uh, red probe we're gonna measure at the output so right there and uh, oops clip came off so I'm gonna turn the power supply on now before we clip that so you can see that's on so right now there's current running through both of these it's still like a fixed resistor and so there's current running through this 1 kilo ohm resistor and then current running through this 10 kilo ohm resistor nothing's coming out of the output of course because nothing's connected to it so now I'm going to clip this here and uh, first let's do the uh, 10 kilo ohm so I'll plug this jumper into there that's the same row that the output is in so now you can see this is about halfway a little closer to the positive so we're slightly above the 5 volts of the power supply I can do this because the meters really not letting any current flow there's a very high amount of resistance you do have to be aware when you set this all the way towards the positive rail there this components not going to limit current at all right now but when we turn it this way now there's more resistance to the positive side but less to the negative side you can see that the voltage goes down. If we turn it all the way here, it's right to the negative rail. There's zero ohms of resistance to the negative rail. So there's no way this can push current from positive to negative right now. This is connected directly to there and we have zero volts. So that's how they work as potentiometers. So I'll plug it into this one. Again, it's sort of halfway but towards positive again. For this one I need a screwdriver to adjust it but again I'll turn it all the way towards positive you can see we have the 5 volts of the power supply all the way to negative and we can get a voltage anywhere between but uh, remember this is not a very good power source voltage this is better for getting a signal so we're given a signal to the multimeter of a certain amount of voltage the multimeter is really blocking all the current so it can hold that steady if uh, let me get a resistor quick here's one I think this is a fairly high value resistor though but I'll put it to the negative rail you're gonna see the voltage dropped and uh, this is a 2 kilo ohm resistor a lower value resistor let me get a 220 ohm resistor out one where the leads are already bent hopefully and we'll put that to the negative rail and you're going to see that we lost even more voltage. It would be even more dramatic with this one because it has a higher resistance. But in any case, there you can see the uh, voltages being output by these two trim pots. So now we're going to put together an actual demonstration circuit. And I'm going to take this LED. First we'll do the 10 kilo ohm trim pot. I still have the black lead uh, plugged in to that negative rail there. So the long lead the anode we want to put to the output of the trim pot because the other side of the circuit is going to be over here to the negative rail and so it'll just be to how positive we get here so right now we got it towards turn towards this side which goes to the negative rail so there will be a zero volt difference between those two points we're going to take a 220 ohm resistor because that will limit current enough to protect the LED less than 20 milliamps that's generally what's recommended. It will keep this resistor at less than an eighth of a watt. It's rated for a quarter watt. You generally want to keep it about half. And it will also limit current through this uh, potentiometer when I set it all the way up to the positive. So it will protect all three components. We're going to take this, the red 
outside of the uh, multimeter, the red probe is clipped to this, so we'll measure the voltage at that uh, potentiometer. So now we're going to back up, take a look at the voltage on the meter, and I could turn it by hand, that kind of blocks things, so I will just take this uh, screwdriver and slowly turn it. There's a slot in the top here, and you're going to see the voltage go up, and when we get about in the range of uh, 1.6 volts, then you will see the LED turn on. So it's not turning, getting very bright very fast because this is a lot of uh, resistance, 10 kilo ohms. But uh, if I turn it all the way to the positive rail, now you can see it gets really bright. So the only thing limiting the current right now is that resistor there. And uh, so let's do the same thing with the next one. I'll shuffle stuff really quick here. And this potentiometer has less resistance, about a tenth of the resistance of this one. So you'll see the LED get brighter quicker. It's uh, set up to about 2.49 volts. There we go. We go down to nothing. Again, we go up. And uh, you're going to see it gets bright quite a bit quicker because the trim pot has less resistance. So that's one thing to be aware of when you have an input how much impedance or resistance reactance the uh, source has. Now we're going to move the resistor down one more spot and grab another LED. So in series. These are two LEDs in series now. They're not parallel. The current's got to run through this one and then this one. Let me make sure the uh, yep, long leads more towards positive. So it's connected to the short lead of the other LED. There we go. So now, when we look at this, we got two volts now. The other LED was on at two volts. Now they're off. So we're going to have to go up close to uh, about three and a half volts before they start conducting, really, in that range. About three volts, a little trickle of current goes through. They light a little bit. But you can see they start really getting bright closer to uh, four volts. And uh, I don't know what's going on. Looks like we got a little bit of a loose connection up there it's kind of flickering there it's a better connection these things do wear out that's one reason why you don't see them used a whole lot and uh, this might be the first one for me that looks like it's wearing out but in any case that's how you use the uh, trim pot as a potentiometer it's when you want and that's how they're normally used as a potentiometer it's when you want a specific voltage at a point but I did a quick demonstration if you're letting a lot of current flow through, that's going to throw it off because it really depends on the uh, current flowing through the component and uh, just uh, tapping into that and getting a sample of that. When you let a lot of that current flow out of the output, that throws it off a little bit. But uh, for this demonstration circuit, you can see the voltage changes. That's what matters in uh, this video right now.